coming uh, for our candidate today for the Director of Athletics and Campus Recreation. This is Pete Cotilli, and he comes most recently from Louisville, Kentucky. And we're really thrilled to have him here. I'll let him tell a little bit about himself, and then he has the, the same scenario or the same um, presentation topic to talk about the mission and vision of community colleges in general and LCCCs in particular and then how uh, his leadership of uh, athletics and campus recreation will fit into that, contribute to those mission values, and um, then what he'd do in the first five years. So take it away, Pete, and welcome. Great. Thank you, Judy. Everybody hear me okay? Done a lot of talking uh, this morning, so uh, hopefully my voice holds up. And trying to stay hydrated in the, in the altitude change from where I come from. So um, anyway, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I've had... Uh, Several great meetings with different groups uh, this morning and uh, very excited to uh, be here for this opportunity and uh, explore the possibilities and gather information and, and field questions from everybody. And, and I've had a lot of great questions and interest and, and that's uh, exciting for me. Uh, to give you a little bit of uh, background on myself, um, I've spent 27 years uh, in college athletics. Um, uh, in the East Coast, on the East Coast, uh, out west here, uh, and now um, formerly in the South at the University of Louisville. Um, I started my career at a small school at Bucknell University um, in Pennsylvania after getting my master's degree at New York University, uh, NYU, and doing an internship at Dartmouth College up in Hanover, New Hampshire. Um, after seven years at Bucknell, uh, handling uh, business affairs, internal operations, and other um, things as they came up uh, for me, uh, working in a small department uh, to take advantage of growing myself uh, career-wise, um, you know, marketing-wise, sponsorship-wise, those kind of things. I moved to Pocatello, Idaho, and worked at Idaho State University for three years uh, as assistant athletic director for internal operations, business affairs, uh, and was involved in uh, some facility building uh, as well when I was there. Um, got the opportunity in 1995 to go to Colorado State University uh, down the road in Fort Collins and um, was assistant athletic director there for business and internal operations. Uh, spent three and a half years there. Um, and um, after that, spent two years at St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri uh, as director of marketing and also uh, handled some business affairs a couple months before I left to go to University of Louisville. Um, Tom Jurich hired me at University of Louisville and also hired me at Colorado State in 95, so we had a long-standing relationship there um, and was able to do a lot of different things there, uh, work with the football and basketball programs administratively when I first got there in a couple different roles, and also um, uh, marketing, licensing, merchandise, branding, oversaw the ticket office for a while, and uh, last few years uh, oversaw our facility development, uh, capital projects, uh, and built um, several large facilities, a $238 million KFC Yum Center, which is the finest basketball arena in the country, multi-purpose uh, facility, um, which is a cooperative effort between uh, the university, uh, the state of Kentucky, and the uh, Louisville metro area. Um, $72 million football stadium expansion, uh, along with several other buildings that uh, housed our uh, men's basketball, women's volleyball, women's lacrosse, another building for field hockey, um, a golf facility, indoor practice facility, uh, baseball stadium. Uh, we experienced a large boom on campus uh, athletically and facility-wise, which helped enable us to uh, grow as a university. And uh, with the president in place, uh, currently Jim Ramsey, uh, really felt that athletics uh, was a front door for the university. And using the right way could really enhance the program um, and the whole entire uh, institution uh, and grow. And uh, the growth that's been happening on campus in the last few years has been tremendous, not only from an athletic standpoint, but from an institutional standpoint, with dorms being built. Um, they're building a $38 million recreation center right now that will open uh, this fall. 
and uh, several other opportunities that uh, the camp is starting to grow from a, an urban uh, commuter school to uh, the transformation to a traditional uh, institution. And um, it's been neat to see everybody work together uh, in that effort. And, you know, the president tabbed uh, the phrase one university, whereas everybody's working together. There's no silos, uh, but everybody works together and feeds off each other uh, to be successful. And so I look at the opportunity um, at LCCC as, as um, the first time full-time athletic director in being a part of the, the college and the institution athletically, recreationally, and also within the community. Because I think, you know, people have a great opportunity in the community um, and to attend a community college to enhance themselves socially, professionally, vocationally, uh, academically, um, you know, either part-time or full-time, change your career opportunities uh, to change direction so that they can advance themselves in their careers and in their personal and professional lives. And I believe at LCCC, we have a great opportunity being in a, um, the capital of the state uh, with the population base that we have to integrate everybody together academically, athletically, recreationally, and in a community to be able to um, be one college in one, in one town, in one community. And I really feel that there's opportunities in the, the groups that I talked to today uh, to be able to take my experiences, bring them here, and you know, I know there's a lot that's, that's going on that's great, um, some things that probably need to be improved, and some things I can bring, bring to the table um, for the university, for athletics, for recreation, to help expand the programs uh, from a um, you know, sponsorship standpoint, fundraising standpoint, facility standpoint, um, recreational standpoint, so that we can all uh, enjoy those, uh, the activities and uh, recreational wise or the athletics, uh, get more exposure um, as we move forward. So what I'd like to do is just talk about um, some of the things that I think are important. Um, you know, I have a teaching background. Uh, I've taught a couple semesters, six, seven semesters at the University of Louisville, and I'd like to see, um, have that opportunity to expand a little bit um, the program here maybe um, in a physical education area. Uh, to offer uh, sport management type courses. Um, I think that the popularity of that major in colleges and on as a profession is something that um, we could certainly look into and maybe not develop a major, but also develop some type of uh, programming so some of the people that are involved in sports and recreation uh, management would be able to um, take advantage of that and, and grow in the program academically and, and possibly as a career. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there in this profession and, and uh, I think that's something that uh, we may want to take a look at and explore. I would like to be a part of the uh, strategic planning process that goes on here. Um, I know there is a plan in place. Um, uh, I'm not sure all the details. I've, I've looked at it overall in general. Uh, but I think there's opportunities for us to grow. Um, athletically, obviously academically. I know there's some things going on with that. But um, be able to um, be a part of that and really expand programs and offer programs of interest to the campus and the community in the recreational sense that, you know, is there opportunities to grow our facilities and be able to um, offer programming and, and uh, different types of things for people to uh, be involved in and really um, have a really alive campus, a really vibrant campus um, that people want to be a part of and it's a part of the community as well. Um, there's a couple things that I see, sorry I've been talking a lot all day so my got to wet my whistle once in a while. Um, there's a couple things that are important to me um, when I talk about the campus life 
and our student athletes. Um, I want them to be winners, and not just always winners on the, on the field, but winners in life. And I think it's important uh, for someone in my position and our coaches to be able to develop a positive environment um, so they can be you know, winners in life and we're preparing them for the future. Um, and I think there's several things that I see happening in the first few years that I'm here that I really like to concentrate on and be able to you know, help enhance the environment at LCCC. And number one is the student athletes. And these aren't in any particular order. It's just um, you know, starting point. But you know, they're students first, they're athletes second. And they're here for a reason. They're here to get their education, to start their education process, um, and be able to either get their degree and start their career or get their degree here and move on to a four-year institution and get their um, bachelor's degree or whatever area they're concentrating in. And that's the most important thing. So my number one priority with our student athletes is making sure that they get their degree, they're good citizens, and you know, they, they fulfill the university role model um, as being a good student. That's the number one priority. Um, as far as being athletes, you know, I want to be able to them, for, for them to have the environment of good coaching, good training, good nutrition, uh, be able to work on their athletic skill so that if they have the opportunity to go to a four-year school and, and, and um, um, you know, participate and, and want to do that, that they can. Because I just think it enhances their whole life experience. Um, I'm a big, you know, fitness person. Uh, I certainly don't do as much as I did when I was younger, but I like to maintain a high level of fitness. You know, I watch what I eat. I don't always, always eat the right things, but, you know, um, you know I enjoy uh, living a healthy lifestyle and a wellness lifestyle. And I want to make sure that uh, we provide that type of environment, you know, for our student athletes. I want them to be role models on campus. I want them to be role models on the community. I want them to outreach uh, into our community, reach out into our community, I should say, um, and, and provide positive role models for you know, families, children, others in the community, uh, so they can look at uh, LCCC and their athletic program and really feel a sense of pride in it and a, a sense of connection, I think, is, is really important with a community this size. Second thing I'd like to see is, is uh, recreational opportunities um, to take a look at what we offer here and make sure we're really meeting the needs of our student body, our staff, our community, um, and make sure that there's those opportunities to, um, that people are interested in, you know, programs, courses, classes, uh, to enhance themselves recreationally. Um, Intramural-wise, club sport-wise, you know, I want to be as supportive as I can for people that, you know, uh, want to participate or develop new programs. And I'd be really interested to hear what some of those are uh, after spending a short time period here. My son's a junior at uh, University of Louisville, and he was an athlete in high school. He played baseball. Um, he was a good high school baseball player, but wasn't good enough to play in college. And, you know, I think that always bothered him a little bit uh, when he first went to school, you know, being an athlete. And, and uh, they were number one in the state for a while. Um, Kentucky's got good baseball. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of missed that. And... You know, after about a year, he kind of got over it a little bit. And then um, last spring, he said to me, he said, Dad, I want to start a club baseball program. You know, I really, I love, still love to play. And um, I want to start a club baseball program. What do you think? I said, I think that's fantastic, you know. And, um, you know, I know the people are involved and, you know, get you started. And he's like, you know what, I, I, know, I know what I need to do, and I'd like to do it myself. 
And I said, that's fantastic. You know, anything you need from me, just let me know if you need any help. So we went through the whole process, got a team, got a coach, got a facility, got, um, you know, it passed to be a club sport, an officially recognized club sport within the university, went through some of the ordeal of all that and some of the maybe non-responsiveness from the person in charge and some of the frustrations. But they just played their first game two weeks ago. And I was really proud of him uh, for, you know, going through that whole process and following his dream to do that. And I think, you know, sometimes that gets lost on college campuses where, you know, people are caught up in what they're doing as a, as a job, as a, if they look at it as a job, um, and, and just going through the motions and, you know, somebody comes to them to start a program or have initiation to do that. And, um, you know, I'm open to that. I, I, I would welcome that, you know, that, that uh, you know, especially here in a, in a place where I think we've got a lot of potential for growth, that I welcome the opportunities and the ideas that people have um, to expand programs. So that's kind of an example of, of my philosophy on that. But um, I think the other thing that I kind of touched on a little bit is be one college, athletics, uh, recreation, fitting with the vision of the, the uh, college campus and um, being a part of things. Um, talking with Judy and, and Joe Schaefer about um, the environment here and the culture here. Uh, I want to be a part of that. Um, I, think, um, I think it's exciting to develop master plans and strategic plans, but I think it's, it's something that, you know, it's great to have it out there now let's, let's implement things. Let's put things together and let's start the process of building a campus and building a community and building our, our student population and the programs associated with that. I think that's important and, and I really love to participate in that process and I see us being actively involved in that as a, uh, as a department. I want to be visible. I want to be visible in the community. I want to be visible on campus. Um, I think that's important for this position, uh, to be active. And, and uh, I'm a people person. Uh, I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy getting to know people. And you know, I think it's important to, to friend raise as well as fund raise. And I think that's something that I feel very comfortable doing. Um, and I would like to see that happen very quickly when I when I come here, um, the, um, I'd like to create a vibrant and alive campus and have this kind of be the place that uh, everybody looks at in five years and go, wow, what a transformation, you know? And that takes everybody's part. That's not just me. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm gonna come in here and do this, this, and this. It's being a part of the things that everybody's committed to to make it happen. And I see some things in place uh, thought-wise and program-wise and personnel-wise that I think that's a, that's a strong possibility of, of getting a lot of things done. I want to be active in a community, like I said, um, partnership-wise, uh, educationally, uh, draw people uh, to the university. Uh, we were talking earlier this morning about media exposure uh, for the university, excuse me, the college and the um, uh, uh, athletic department and, and, and what's going on. And, and I feel with my experiences and, and uh, ability to build relationships um, with those uh, entities that uh, you know, we can start to make some progress in that area. Um, I think we're gonna have a great story to tell in the next five to 10 years. And uh, I think we're gonna need that platform to do it. So very comfortable with those things and uh, Look forward to really um, being a part of things as far as the community goes and try and connect everybody uh, together. So, you know, very, very kind of general ideas of, of, of what I'm looking to do here um, and, and what I want to be a part of. Uh, it's kind of hard to get into specifics just because, you know, I, I'm not really f totally familiar with things here, uh, but I like what I've seen and heard 
and the people I met and the questions they've asked. Um, there have been uh, really things. I'm not a maintenance person. I, I wouldn't want to come to a job where status quo is great. Um, everybody's happy with where they're at. Um, you know, I want to make sure that we're in a, in a growth mode. And that's okay if it's slow growth. It's, it's okay. Um, you know, and people ask me, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And one of my weaknesses, I'm patiently impatient. You know, I mean, I have a great tolerance for things getting done and being patient. And, and even when I'm impatient, I guess I appear to be patient. But I like to get things moving and get things done and moving in the right direction. And um, I think we're going to have a lot of successes here. And I'm really looking forward to being a part of that, that process. So I appreciate everybody coming. And, um, you know, I'm very open to questions. Uh, and, and, you know, all I would ask is if you just tell me your, your name. I know there's a lot of different groups being represented and what you represent or interest, just so I can get you noted a little bit and um, go from there. So thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you, Pete. And I will hand a microphone around for people to speak into the microphone for the benefit of people online. Hi, my name is Arlene Lester. I'm the Facilities and Events Program Manager here at LCCC. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We manage the master schedule. There's kind of a centralized scheduling process here. And, and so I have a couple questions, one to do with facilities and one to do with um, some of our specific athletics. We have egg and rode egg rodeo, and then we have a horse show team. And I just wonder, do you have experience with that? How do you see those types of athletic activities fitting in with the round ball athletics? Good question. That's been asked several times, and, and I understand why. Um, I don't have a lot of specific experience with those sports, uh, but um, I think that's okay. Uh, because um, living in Kentucky the last 12 years, I've got a lot through osmosis on, on you know, the hoof, uh, mostly going, you know, two miles, to, you know, a mile and a half or three quarters or whatever it is in two minutes. And, uh, but uh, anyways, it's, um, I, I, the way I look at, you know, the hoof sports, the round ball sports, whatever you want to classify it as, classify them as, is that, you know, we're going to treat everybody the same. You know, everybody... The student athletes, the coaches, um, we're going to treat everybody the same because they deserve that. And it's, you know, those opportunities, whether it's women's soccer, whether it's rodeo, whether it's men's basketball, we hope to add women's basketball. At least that's my, my hope. And I think others, some others share that as well. Um, we want to we develop a, a broad based successful program across the board. And yeah, I have some things to learn specifically. Um, you know, I've been to rodeos. Um, I understand some of the components of it. I've seen equestrian events. I understand some of the components of it. But I'm really looking forward to learning more about those sports and how they actually work and, and uh, meeting with the coaches a little bit more in depth and the, then the student athletes on, on how, how that all works. Because I'm really interested. I'm interested in learning, you know. Um, and, and learning and providing, um, you know, my guidance and leadership and management with those programs because I can learn from them and I think they can learn from me as well. We were talking about some things at lunch uh, that I thought was were kind of neat too. So from a sponsorship perspective, and and um, I thought that was pretty cool dialogue. So I look forward to it. I really do. I'm excited. I have one more question, and um, it's about facilities. Obviously, that's my that's my thing. Um, the uh, PE facilities. Have you been able to visit down there I yet? I've not tour yet. Okay, um, soon. It's definitely a multi-use facility, and you touched on a little bit on facilities management, and you touched a little bit on a new, wonderful, gosh, we'd love one of those multi-use uh -huh. facilities that you guys have just built. And so tell me, how do you prioritize all the different things? We have academics in there, credit and non-credit classes. We have athletics in there, intramurals, student, campus. We have a lot of community use in there. Um, there's 120 kids in there parents out here on Saturday doing soccer so right. yeah how do you prioritize all that well I mean I think you have to look at what's in place already and how successful that is 
Um, you know, I don't want to come in here and just say, hey, everything you've done in the past is not going to work with me, you know, because I respect what's, what's been done in the past and, and uh, how things are. Um, and, you know, are there ways that we need to adjust uh, those kind of things to have a system in place for what the priorities are? Is there one? Isn't there one? I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, those are some answers I need to get when I would get on campus and, and find out, you know, is that working okay? Or are there things that we need to be adjusted, you know? And it comes down to, I think, what those priorities are. And, you know, for instance, athletics, you know, there's some things that, you know, they're going to, during the season, there may be some priorities that take place over other activities that aren't uh, really as, as critical at that time of year or things that can be adjusted. But, I mean, I'm an adaptable, flexible person, and I believe that um, I, I can see I was an economics major in, in college, and um, I don't remember a whole lot about economics except the fact that I understand the cause and effect relationship, you know, and uh, so I, that's about the only thing that uh, has been, you know, practical from an athletic standpoint, but at the same time, uh, I was also a sociology major, I was a double major, so I understand how to deal with people. So it's been a good combination for me. And with something like that, I think, you know, we just need to take a look at, uh, you know, how we can best accommodate all groups uh, and, and do it in a positive fashion without any, any type of major interruptions. And, you know, hopefully we get to the point where we're building uh, new facilities uh, on campus so we can accommodate and uh, to grow. Like I said, I'd like to see this being a live, vibrant, busting at the seam uh, campus. Uh, saw that happen at, at Louisville. Uh, go from a, a commuter school uh, to a, a university that uh, is alive. It's very much alive. And so what you see happening was athletic facilities getting built, then dorms getting built. Um, now there's a, a campus town that's being built with student housing, uh, restaurants, uh, those kind of things that just got completed, student recreation center, like I said, and all of a sudden the snowball's rolling. You know, and it's getting real big, and, and we joked about this this morning, and, you know, there's a big uh, uh, rival between University of Louisville and University of Kentucky. And, um, you know, University of Kentucky, Big Blue, and, and uh, Big Blue Nation, and, you know, dominate the state, and, and Big Brother in Louisville's, you know, always been considered a little brother. Well, we had a saying, too, to go that uh, little brother's now 6'8", 285 pounds. So little brother's growing up a little bit. And uh, I bring that same mentality, you know, to the LCCC. A little bit more than you wanted, but. <laughs> Great. Hi. I'm Sandy. I'm the assistant coordinator in the exercise science department. Great to um, meet you. Live over in the physical education complex. So um, the job description calls for you wearing many hats. How do you balance which hat, what time? I love a lot of hats. Kinds of things. Okay. I love a lot of hats. And I've gotten that question uh, a lot of times, not necessarily this first one today, but um, um, I love variety. And uh, that's what I really... My career, uh, like I said, I started out at, at smaller institutions and had opportunities to get involved in a lot of different areas. And it just kind of naturally happened, you know. And I've always taken that with me every place I've been and probably overextended myself sometimes um, with being involved with a specific area, yet I've said, well, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and do this. But I've always tried to make it work and um, been pretty successful with it. And so, you know, when people ask me, you know, what did I do, you know, when, what, what do you do at University of Louisville? And I said, well, you know, I'm oversee licensing merchandise, tickets, facilities, um, our contract with Adidas, equipment, uh, facilities, grounds, da, 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 da. I'm like, wow. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I like it, and I, and I, and I enjoy the variety. Um, and it was asked at lunch, you know, what I like to do and, um, you know, personally and, and enjoy. And, you know, I went to my first ballet. Uh, well, was it my first? My first opera two weeks ago and then my ballet on Sunday. 
And, um, you know, I enjoy doing a different variety of things from fly fishing to crossword puzzles to blah, blah, blah. And I just, you know, I enjoy doing different things. And I feel in the workplace I'm able to balance um, a lot of different things, wear a lot of different hats. Uh, and that's where my experience is in a lot of different areas of, of athletics. And uh, I feel very comfortable in a being able to do that. I have several questions. Okay. So that's why I'm hanging on to the mic. Do it. What's your management style? My management style is I'm not a micromanager. I believe that people are in place to use their expertise, um, let people do their job, keep close contact on what's going on so that we don't have situations arise that blindside me. Um, I'm a very trusting person, uh, almost to a fault. I've had that trust abused before, and it's very uncomfortable for me to um, have that happen. But um, I like to know what's going on, but I'm not a micromanager. And uh, I think that's important for people to do their jobs, not feel like someone's looking over their shoulder. I'm very supportive. My door's open to not only the coaches and staff, but the student athletes, anybody on campus. Um, you know, participation by uh, everybody. Uh, we're all in this together, and I expect um, that in return from everybody. I don't like silos. Um, I don't like hidden agendas, because I'm an open book. What you see is what you get. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you where you stand. Hopefully, you know, 98% of that's positive. But if there's an issue, we're going to address it and hopefully improve it. I mean, people are your most valuable asset in an organization. And I've had to work with people that are supervised people that have been very difficult to manage. But at the same time, I felt it's important to put those um, – put things in place to help them be successful. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But for the most part, you know, people fire themselves. And, um, you know, hate to have that happen, but it's happened, you know, a few times. And, and, uh, but not without going down without a fight and helping them try and be, um, you know, better employees and better people. So. Speaking of those people, how do you feel about inheriting a staff? We have a lot of people that are already here. I think it's great. They're here for a reason. You know, and I'm looking forward to working with people and, and uh, uh, getting to know the staff and the people I've met and talked to, um, I think are terrific. And I'm looking forward to getting to know them a little bit better. And, and um, you know, if they want to stay here and, and uh, work here for a long time, great. If they have career aspirations to uh, go on to other places, I got a lot of connections. I've been in this business a long time, and um, it's very interesting to me, you know, places I've been, times I've been, the people I've worked with, uh, where they're at now, people that are super successful people that I didn't even see that coming, you know, and I'm like, well, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, so I look forward to, to working with the staff that's in place, and, and, you know, I don't believe in being a hatchet person coming in and saying, okay, we're going to do everything different. That's how we're going to do it and do it my way because, you know, I don't think that's the right way to approach things. So looking forward to working with the people that are here. Okay. What specific experience do you have with fundraising or generating funds? Um, you know, several different ways. Um, you know, I've talked earlier today with different groups about um, uh, some of the things I was involved in revenue, revenue generation wise. Um, worked on a uh, agreement, uh, third party rights holder for marketing, uh, an elegant sports marketing. Uh, about the second or third year I was at Louisville. And our marketing program, corporate sponsor program, was about break even proposition, you know, spent a million, made a million, um, maybe made a little bit of money, but not much. And so um, myself and two other people on staff sat down with this, uh, this company. There's several different ways to do it um, as far as marketing and third-party rights holders. 
Uh, so I'm give you a lump sum check. Here's what we think your value is. This company in particular, we want to develop a partnership, we want to grow together. And uh, so we took a basically a break-even operation, um, and now that generates about six or seven million dollars a year um, in corporate sponsorships. And at the time we put the agreement together, I was a li liaison with that uh, company and helped them assimilate in the community, also in the department. And um, you know, if I had to meet with sponsors or help sponsors understand what that relationship is, because it's new and someone coming from out of town, um, we did a lot of things to make that transition real smooth. Uh, I was oversaw our Adidas contract at the University of Louisville, and when that first contract got put in place, it was a forty thousand dollar deal with a three hundred thousand dollar buy clause plus plus whatever you put on top of that, and we just um, renegotiated for the second time, uh, the third term of that contract. Uh, that went in effect 2010. It's a five-year, $22 million deal. And that comes from a lot of people doing a lot of great things. Um, but I had a special relationship with Adidas, and um, you know, we were able to generate um, success, uh, which generated uh, their interest and went from a um, team school to a licensed property school, which means they take your stuff to retail. And not only does that generate dollars for them, it helps brand the University of Louisville. And so, you know, with that, we were able to put together an agreement of, you know, taking money that we were putting towards apparel and, and team gear and shifting those dollars uh, to be able, you know, for scholarships, you know, salaries, uh, travel, operating expense take those dollars and shift them over, which, which is a, was a tremendous uh, benefit to the department. It's involved in uh, collegiate licensing at the University of Louisville. Again, when I got there, it was an in-house operation, probably a break-even operation. And uh, we did some uh, due, dil due diligence on another company, outside company, to come in and help us uh, with that. And last year, we uh, generated over $1.2 million in the license area. And that's not only great for the revenue side, but it's also great uh, from the branding side. And uh, I think that's a big, big plus for university, uh, college, institution, uh, to be able to get your merchandise out. Uh, talked about that a little bit this morning. Um, and um, you know, I think there's an opportunity to do some things here. As far as uh, other things as raising money, and, and uh, you know, I was involved in corporate sponsorship sales uh, at St. Louis University. And also, from a facility standpoint, we did so many buildings of facilities at the University of Louisville that um, we started to make it a culture of, you know, obviously you have a budget and you want to stay within that budget. Once you start building facilities, everybody goes, what? Well, the renderings look really great, but can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we add on? You know, and we made it a culture with the contractors, the subcontractors, the people that we worked with um, to donate back to the project, you know, whether it's something in kind or whether it's financial. And, you know, having that relationship with those people, um, you know, did a lot of the asking on that side to, to get those contributions done. And it could be small things. It could be major things. Um, but, you know, it really, when it comes to, to fundraising and revenue generation, whatever, uh, terminology you want to use, and um, whatever the methods, you know, it's really a relationship building process, a long-term relationship building process, sincerity, people understand that, you know, it's not just you're going to ask me for money and you're going to leave and I'm never going to see you again. It's that long-term connection that, you know, and meeting people, uh, you know, there's times that the culture of, of the athletic departments I've worked in where you're on trips, you have donors with you, you have sponsors with you, you go to games and after games you get together, you meet people, you know who the people are in the community, you know what their capacities are, and you know they may say, hey, Pete, what do you got going on these days? You know, oh, we're building this, or this is on the board, or we're looking to do that, and you just never know when someone will say, hey, you know, I might be interested in that. 
tell me a little bit more about that, or I'd like to get together with you, you know, or I know someone else who, who, uh, who might be interested in that, maybe a little bit more than me, and I know they got the capacity to do some things. We need to connect you guys to them, you know. It's everybody working together. Everybody's got their eyes and ears open so you can be successful. And even though I've worked in some larger athletic departments, I've also worked in small ones, but larger ones where everybody's got their role or perceived role of development, facilities, academics, compliance, we all work together. And that was the neat thing about the departments I've worked in so far. Everybody working together and keeping the eyes and ears open and people coming to me from a licensing standpoint said, hey, I saw someone, you know, it's got this logo, but it doesn't really look like our logo. Maybe you want to check it out, you know, um, to going to the fundraising person who that's, that's their official title and saying, you know, I talked to somebody the other day and I think they got some capacity to do some things. Here's their name and number. I'll connect you if you want to go out to, all to, go out to lunch. Let's do it. And I think that's how you get things done. So... Along that same line, you mentioned being visible in the uh, community. How do you, you'll be new here, how do you intend to become more active in the community? Well, I would hope uh, as soon as I get here that I have the opportunities to um, uh, speak with people um, in the media. I have opportunities to speak uh, with people who are involved um, in the program, um, key business people, key donors. Um, other people, I'm going to be out, I'm going to be meeting people, you know, and um, I'm a people person. Um, there's going to be other people that are going to introduce me around, and I'm just going to, you know, keep hitting the pavement and, and uh, be visible, you know. And uh, in this position, you know, in the, in the position, I think, um, you know, a lot of people uh, are interested and gravitate towards, towards getting to know you and know who you are. Um, you know, I was at Louisville, I mean, I'd be out at the supermarket and I'd, you know, be minding my own business and somebody would come up and just talk to me because they knew I was involved in a program, you know, and I love that. I think that's neat because they're sharing their passion with my passion and um, we're ways to get involved. You know, people are like, hey, I'd like to get involved in something. How can I do that? Or I'd like to do this or, you know, call me up and, hey, I got this great idea for, you know, a licensed product or, or whatever. And, and, um, you know, that's how you meet people, and, and you know you just never know what that may lead to, and if it just leads to another friend or another fan, that's terrific. You know, so I intend to be very visible. I'm Robert Van Cleve. I'm a faculty member here. I teach computer science. Hi, Robert. Um, it it seems like your experience and has always been in uh, four-year institutions and even some major uh, D1 uh, schools. Uh, you're now trying to take a step to a community college. I have a two-part question, I guess. What is the major difference as far as you see between a four-year college and university and a community college? And um, do you think you'll be happy uh, taking this step down in, in kind of the pecking order uh, uh, amongst uh, institutions of higher learning? Yes, I think I'll be very happy. Um, like I said, I've worked at all different levels um, and size, and um, I'm a very adaptable person, very flexible person, and can find my way pretty easily. So whatever learning curve there may be between a two and a four year institution, um, I'm, I'm really comfortable with that and uh, really feel that I can uh, thrive and be successful and, and uh, enjoy the experience. Um, Division I athletics has changed a lot the last five, ten years. And it's not, it's, it's, a lot of places don't follow the mission, mission of what that's all about. The academics, the athletics, it's business. It's watching out for yourself. People that you were members of leagues for for years and years and years, gone. You know, someone else leaves. You know, I look at the Big East Conference, which Louisville is still a member of, um, and it just breaks my heart on how that all happened because I grew up in Big East country. I'm originally from Pennsylvania and watched Big East athletics, especially basketball, because that was their brand, um, develop. And I grew up with that. And I finally, when I got to Louisville and a couple years ago, going to the Big East conference, I'm like, man, this is awesome. I never thought this would be, you know, whatever happened, 
you know, and playing against the schools that I grew up watching and, and um, you know, cheering for. And, and, you know, now all of a sudden you got people leaving and going to different conferences. You got conferences that are, um, you know, the Catholic Seven, as they call them, the basketball schools, uh, breaking off on their own and apparently have rights to the name Big East. So all of a sudden you have a conference next year where schools are still in it for another year and then they're going to different conferences. You've got other schools coming in next year and other schools are coming in the following year. They don't even have a name, you know, because the Big East is going with this other group. So what are they going to be called? I mean, it, to me, that's not what this is all about, you know. This is all about the students and the athletes and providing a positive environment for them to be successful. And, you know, when I looked and I saw this job, I, for me it was just the right combination of, you know, time, place, position. Um, you know, I love the West and I love the opportunities recreationally that are here um, and professionally. I like the opportunity of, of what this position offers. So. I look at myself being very happy here. Hi, Pete. I'm Don Erickson. I'm a trustee. Hi, Don. I'm a new trustee. So these folks don't really know me too well. <laughs> uh, we're going to get along just fine then. <laughs> All right. So we're kind of coming on <laughs> if you come aboard. Yeah. OK. Uh, you know, your exuberance, your experience, uh, your goals are, are tremendous. And uh, kind of following just a little bit on what was said earlier, there are some constraints. Uh, it's, it's not uh, going to be an open book and you write the chapters. You're going to have some uh, struggles here. Uh, one is uh, financially. Uh, the board has minimal financial resources. Uh, for athletics and for some years uh, it's been a half-time director yep. and the half-time director uh, hasn't allowed really time to do the kinds of things that you want to do fortunately the uh, the new uh, president recognized the need for a uh, athletic director he had to convince the board I wasn't along at the time uh, when that debate occurred but uh, there is a, uh, I think, maybe an, an attitude that uh, athletics isn't maybe all that important compared to uh, academics. And we, and those of us, most of us, I would think, in this room, recognize the importance of physical education, recreation, and athletics. So that's a, a real constraint that you have to uh, cope with. Um, I have a question relative to, uh, as an athletic director, uh, you, what you see your role uh, in uh, recruitment, in recruitment of the various uh, sports. And then I have another question after that. The sports or the student athletes? Uh, no, the student athletes. Okay. Well, I think I play a vital role. Um, now, obviously, um, we need to have a lot in place recruiting-wise, you know, for, for students to, to choose us over other institutions. Um, and I was speaking earlier to a couple different groups and student athletes look at facilities and what they're wearing. You know, those are the main things that they look at. And, um, you know, what brand are they wearing? Is it Adidas? Is it Nike? Is it Under Arm? What kind of facilities do you have? Um, you know, who you're competing against are, are important as well. And, you know, sometimes um, you have to do it with smoke and mirrors. I've been in places where you have to do it with smoke and mirrors and, and, and sell the, the future. Um, and other places, you know, you, you've, the future's there and you're, you're, you're selling, you know, what you have to offer. Uh, but I think, you know, I would play a role in um, recruitment of student athletes to be able to, one, tell them that, hey, you're going to get a quality education here and we're going to make sure that you graduate. That's our number one priority. Number two is we're going to develop you as an athlete and provide you with the, the utmost um, you know, training facilities, uh, competition facilities, uh, things that we can do 
uh, whether it's you know now or in the present. Again, I haven't seen anything, so I haven't had the tour of campus, or I don't know what we have have in that capacity. But um, you know, I feel that I can provide um, people, student athletes, and their parents look at our institution, uh, give them confidence that we're going to take good care of them, and. Uh, whatever we have in place in now is going to have to satisfy, but we're going to look to build in the future. And, you know, I, I mentioned this to groups before, and I think it's a, it's a great example of where you can, you know, get to from where you were. Boise State was a two-year institution in 1932. And they're in the capital city of Idaho, just like we're in the capital city of, of uh, Wyoming. And... 1965, they started offering um, degrees, four-year degrees, and now they're one of the prominent institutions not only in the West but in, in the nation academically and athletically. And I'm not saying we're going to be Boise State, but at the same time, I think there's a, a road map there that I'll probably delve into a little bit more if uh, I get this position and um, kind of see exactly how that operated. And I'm not saying we we're going to be a four-year institution, but I think there's things that we can do in order to grow, um, especially with the interest of, of um, you know, the people on campus and some of the things I'm hearing and seeing today. I think we've got a great chance of being, uh, you know, successful in that and recruiting high-quality student-athletes. One more question. The Booster Club here as far as I can see, has kind of been on a shelf, uh, kind of coasting. Mm -hmm. it, it hasn't been active or at least uh, visible uh, out in the community. Uh, what would be some of your thoughts about uh, moving that Booster Club into a more dynamic organization? I think with Booster Clubs, you, you really got to give them a sense of direction. Um, I, there's every group I've been involved in, they're, they're involved because they have a ton of enthusiasm and they, they want to they help the department. And, but you got to give them direction and you got to keep them focused and use that energy and interest, you know, so we're, we're doing some positive things. And once, you know, once you do that, I think we can, we can really make some progress in that area and get them off the shelf. Um, and uh, utilize them in a lot of different ways. You know, friend raising, fund raising. Obviously, they're probably people that are prominent in the community or have a lot of connections, which is great for me coming in to, to know who's who and who we need to talk to, who don't we need to talk to, who do we need to get involved, who's not interested. And if they're not interested, how do we get them interested? Um, you know, I'm not afraid to ask, and I'm not afraid to say no, and I'm not afraid to get a no. But, um, you know, I think those are things that the efforts that you need to put into to those things and, and work with that, that type of group to, um, you know, get them focused and, and uh, use their energy and enthusiasm to help you. Are you ready? Might want to take a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what is your experience leading and evaluating a coaching into sports support staff? Um, you know, I haven't had direct responsibility over supervision of coaches. So um, I guess I can't speak to that directly. Um, but I've supervised many people, many institutions, uh, evaluated. I've been on committees to hire coaches countless committees because I can't remember how many but you know it's not like hundreds but I've uh, been involved in the search for coaches and um, understand what what that takes uh, you know in an evaluation I mean there's there's a lot of criteria that you're going to look at in evaluating people um, you know and it's different a little bit from coaches with regular staff because you're you know not that you're counting wins and losses but obviously you want to have a successful program and it's hard to have a successful program when you're not winning anything. That's not the main focus, but it goes along with everything in this environment. So um, 
but you know, I, I, I evaluate people a lot across the board, you know, very similarly, and try and be fair, uh, you know, how, and, and I take a lot of that, you know, when I, when I evaluated my staffs in the past, is, you know, I look at myself and saying, when I evaluate this person, am I providing them a platform where they can be successful? Are they the employee they are because of themselves, because of me, because of institutional whatever, institutional itis, I guess it is? I don't know. But <clears throat> I look at myself in that evaluation process to you know, evaluate myself in relation to them before I evaluate them, if that makes sense. So, you know, if we have a coach and a staff that's struggling, is there a reason? You know, are we providing them the opportunities and the resources to be successful? You know, or are we operating it as a intramural recreational club program? I've, we've, I've been at four-year institutions and ones that are Division One. you know, supposedly big time programs that some programs aren't treated very well. So in that evaluation process, uh, that's how I look at it. But I have not had the actual, uh, you know, privilege of evaluating a coaching staff. Okay, next question. Have you worked with students, faculty, and staff directly, and how do you handle um, complaints of the student athletes or any trouble that you might have? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, probably not specifically uh, uh, student athletes, uh, you know, because in, in some larger programs, if you have, you know, some real issues, those are attacked by, you know, someone who may be over academics or, you know, because we had associates and senior associates and academics and compliance and some of those things, you know, they all handle specifically, though uh, I've been involved in senior management staff for my entire career. And so when you're talking as a staff and working through those issues, uh, if there are uh, discipline issues or those things, you know, you're very familiar with what those are and uh, what the course of action is. Uh, obviously, I've dealt with uh, employees that, uh, uh, you know, have had issues and, you know, how do we deal with those and what are the disciplines that we uh, look at. And, and basically with that, you know, I would do the same thing with a student athlete as an employee is, you know, we follow the university guidelines. Uh, if we have issues that are uh, related to human resources or related to student affairs, we're going to involve those entities and let them know what's going on and treat them as a university matter, not just an athletic matter. Um, if there's legal implications, we're going to involve our university attorneys or outside counsel if we need to in order to uh, protect ourselves uh, in situations that we may need to. So uh, we'd follow very similar guidelines the university has set up. And again, it's my feeling of, you know, we're one college, one institution, that uh, we're going to work together on these matters and not um, deal with things individually in our own silo. Okay, next one has to do with recruiting. For instance, um how would you, let's see, for instance, let's see, I'm trying to get my notes together here. Are you opposed to recruiting nationally versus locally, and what would you say to those who feel that you should recruit locally? I think we should recruit nationally, internationally, whatever it takes, um, you know, um, but at the same time, we need to be realistic in our recruiting and, um, um, you know, have areas and have connections that, we're going to be able to, um, you know, achieve success recruiting. You know, we're not going to have a lot of money to throw around and travel all over the world. Um, but I do know that, you know, there are, you know, as at Louisville or uh, Idaho State or, you know, really anywhere, um, you know, some of the coaches have great international connections that they weren't spending a lot of money going over to, you know, recruit. But they were getting quality student athletes, um, you know, internationally, and um, you know, having a lot of success with that. So um, I'm not saying that's the direction we want to go, but I would be supportive of um, you know, uh, nationally recruiting and um, 
you know, certainly if there's local talent and we have the opportunity to have them attend here, we should go after, uh, very much so. Okay, this kind of goes um, a little bit what Don was asking, but what would you say to people that feel that athletics does not belong on a campus? Oh, I'd like to sit down and talk to them about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it, it, it's a debatable topic on every campus and, and uh, you know, um, athletics and recreation have their place. And it just needs to be within the con the where you run into problems is where it's, it's not operated as one institution where people are doing their own thing, they're not as monitored, um, and, and they're not, if they have issues, they're dealing with themselves in their own way as opposed to dealing with it as a university. And you've seen some of these things come up recently that um, you know, are major problems. And you know, as much as I grew up in the shadows of Penn State, and when I was a, you know, I grew up 60 miles from State College, um, you know, that, that was a travesty. And um, that's people operating in their own silos and or people having too much power um, to brush things under the carpet or deal with it in their own way as opposed to the university dealing with it and taking charge of it. And that's where you run into problems. And but the benefits of athletics and recreation, in my mind, when managed properly and part of the institution, far outweigh the benefits, uh, or the negatives, I should say, uh, of anything that um, people could discuss with me and debate with me. Because I, you know, I look at, look at uh, all the success stories uh, across the board, um, and not just you know, professional athletes, but people achieving their goals athletically um, and academically because of the opportunity they got to being a student athlete. And I think there's so many success stories. It's, in my mind, it's a must. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing for the last 27 years. OK, just one last question. OK. In the past, you've worked with large universities. Um, as a solo practitioner, how will you handle working alone? A solo practitioner? That one's Greg's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. A solo practitioner. I guess not having a staff. No assistance. No assistance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I understand that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I alluded to that earlier about being able to wear many hats and. And I'm comfortable doing that. And um, you know, I I'd like to see if we can build a department. You know, and and you know, I'd like to add women's basketball. I'd like to look at adding other sports. I'd look like to look to expand our program. Um, and if that means you know, adding additional staff if we need it, I'm not going to add staff just to add staff. But you know, if that's down the road a ways, that's great. You know, that's that's good signs of growth. Um, you know, I like to involve our students. I like to have interns. I like to have people helping out. You know, and, and, and things that they can do. I'm not saying, you know, when students run our compliance and doing all that stuff, and you know, you're asking for trouble there. But, um, you know, marketing-wise or, or sports information-wise, or, you know, my son, another example, he's into photography now, and I got him a nice camera for, for Christmas with a, a nice lens, and he's into the sports photography. He's got his own website in case you want to buy anything from him. I'm sure, he'd be glad to. <laughs> um, and he's a little entrepreneur. He's got business cards, and he takes photos of games and stuff, and you know, his crowd shots, and then hands him his business cards. So this will be up three hours from now if you want to go on my website and buy it. So he's got it figured out. But um, you know, I like to get him involved. He's he's involved in. Um, uh, sports information with the photographers and helping them catalog photos and just, you know, does it, that, you know, just because he's interested in learning about things and doing stuff. So I'd like to look at, you know, some of that. If we're not doing it, get some involvement, uh, um, you know, to maybe help ease some of the pressures, but, you know, I'm not real concerned about, you know, balancing all the, uh, the things and, and certainly uh, uh, look forward to, to being able to do all that. I like being a one-stop shop. Hi, <clears throat> my name's Karen Winterbull. I work over at the residence hall. Hi, Karen. Hi. Um, my question is, how do you feel about sports? Say, for instance, the 
the season is the fall, and then the students come, and then they only play the sports, and then they're here for the fall, and then they leave. How do you feel about that? Where do they go? Home, mm -hmm. wherever. They just always have a, some excuse that they have to go somewhere and do something else. So they're not here for the spring semester? Correct. I oh. think that they should be here year round. I mean, for fall and spring, if they're going to play in the fall, yeah. they should also be here for the spring semester. Yeah, that's interesting. I, um, yeah, I agree with you. I, I guess I'd have to find a little bit more why that happens. Um, because that means they're not making progress towards their degree. Sounds like in my mind if I'm putting one and one together. Um, so yeah, I'd have to take a look at that and see because, you know, I mean, like I said, academics and, and um, uh, getting their degree is the number one priority and we want to do it, you know, in two years and get them, get them moved on and, you know, continue their careers or, or um, you know, their academic uh, athletic uh, opportunities. So. I would need to need to hear a little bit more about that from uh, uh, you know our coaches and see what's going on with that. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Browder. We met this morning, Hi, the David. rodeo coach. Yes. Uh, when they hired me five years ago, they told me there's two seasons in Cheyenne: winter and frontier days. Uh -huh. are, are, um, so, and you're experiencing winter today. So, um, but I, I was like just winter. I just thought I'd throw that out there for yeah. you. So you would know that yeah but um anyway i guess the big um question that i'm i want to ask you is um you've been in in a lot of bigger schools where you've uh helped gather lots and lots of money from big corporate mm -hmm. people can you shuck the suit and tie and put on a pair of levi's and boots and go out and talk to jim bob who's out calvin is heifers and say, hey, can you help us build some stalls at the school or, or whatever? I mean, can, can, are you able to become a good old boy, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, I am. <laughs> good. That's all I this, needed to do. This will, this will, this will probably be the last time you see me in a suit and tie. This is not me. I had a, no, I didn't have to dig through stuff, but you know, I, this, you know, I, I can wear a lot of hats and I, I can relate to a lot of different people and um, I'm very comfortable doing that, um, you know, because I, I enjoy it and I also respect people that um, what they do and, and what their lifestyle is and um, I'm interested to learn about that. Um, there's a guy uh, worked with at uh, Colorado State, Frank Pierce, and uh, had no idea what he did. He worked for the the ag school, but he all he seemed to do was ride around, talk to ranchers, and uh, and um, cook big dinners. Great cook for big dinners, and I don't—he wasn't fundraising, so I don't know exactly what he did. But we always used to joke about that. But at the same time, you know, I'd go with him because I was interested, and you know, there might be opportunity to go fishing or doing something like that on somebody's ranch, which you know, certainly a, a fun thing to do. Uh, but at the same time, I really feel like I can relate to just about anybody. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed living in the West for seven years and, and uh, understand the culture. And, and um, you know, I'm just as comfortable in the middle of New York City as I am on a trout stream in the middle of nowhere. And the people that are involved, uh, um, you know, in those areas and get to know them. And like I said, it's, it's respecting who they are and what they're doing. And, you know, I... I I can kick it up with a lot of different people. <laughs> time for maybe one or two more questions. Did you look it up? <laughs> call me Chatty Kathy. Um, you talk about successful student athletes and I know that NJCAA has certain grade points, you know, eligibility rules, that kind of thing. What are your rules for GPA, successful candidate, eligibility, those kinds of things? Well, I mean, if they're eligible by the requirements and, and things like that, they're eligible in my mind. I would hope that we'd have, have uh, higher standards than that, um, and I want to have higher standards than that, you know. And it takes a lot of work, and again, I don't know where we're at here 
academically. I don't. And to me, I guess that's an advantage for me coming in because I got a blank slate in a lot of things. And I have a lot of things to learn, but my learning curve is going to be pretty quick. Um, but I know, you know, at University of Louisville, um, we really had an academic challenge there. <coughs> um, and there's a lot of people involved uh, with that to make that happen. Um, and over a 10-year period, it's really, really enhanced. And we have, you know, more than, um, you know, a couple hundred student athletes now on the athletic director's honor or roll of honor or whatever it is, achieving over 3.0 GPA teams doing that. And that wasn't the case years ago. And, you know, <clears throat> again, I don't know where we're at right now, but I want to continue to raise those standards um, so that we're, you know, we're thriving. And they understand, you know, athletes, <clears throat> I'd say student athletes, for the most part, understand what success is on the field more than the classroom. They thrive for it more in the field than the classroom. But, you know, there comes a point, hopefully with all of them, but I hope there's a point that comes that they really grasp on the academic side of things and, and look at those same successes as they do um, on the field and, um, you know, I, that's, that's my focus. And again, I don't know where we're at. But, um, you know, I want those standards to, I mean, there's always room to improve no matter what you're doing. I want to keep continuing to increase those standards and find out how we can do that and do that, you know, within the, within the uh, college. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? What's I'm your name? I'm good. My name is Cindy Henning. I'm the Exercise Science Program Director. Oh, nice to I meet also you teach in the exercise science department. And uh, I'm going to switch gears on you. We've done a lot of talking about athletics okay. and that sort of stuff. And uh, as Arlene alluded to, our building, which you'll soon get to tour, yeah, can't wait. is definitely multi-use academics, community usage, uh, uh, non-credit classes, groups coming in. Um, and one of the areas that's been talked about is improving our programming for community and youth to have access to our building. Right. What ideas do you have for um, youth and community programming that would occur year-round as opposed to only, say, like during the summer when it's not used as heavily for academics? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's probably going to be a challenge. Um, and, and I'm a little bit of a disadvantage because I'm not sure what's all going on right now. Um, so, yeah. So it sounds like, which is good, you know. It's the way we get new buildings is too much activity. Um, but... Um, you know, I'd have to see what's, what's available to them now and what the interests are, and it kind of goes back to what I was talking about um, recreationally, uh, the opportunities uh, on campus of, you know, what are we offering, what's popular, what's, what's what people making use of. Tell them I'll call them later. <laughs> um, and, and, and making sure that we have those opportunities uh, that people are interested in or taking advantage of. And there's some things that we're doing that participation is low or, you know, not what it used to be because, you know, the world of recreation and, and uh, environment is changing quickly. And there's a lot of different programs out there that people are really uh, grasping onto and uh, it's kind of moving pretty quick. So, um, again, it would probably be the same recreationally uh, as well uh, for the community and, and offering programs to see you know, what, what there is and what time do we have, you know, and how are we going to balance all that? Um, because it is a balancing act. And like I said, if we're live and vibrant campus and we're busting at the seams, then that's how you get things done, um, you know, to build new facilities. And, you know, if the community is involved as a part of that, um, um, you know, the overuse at this point, then, you know, there's a way that we can figure out how to involve them and, and uh, get involved with new facilities. So I've seen it done a lot of different ways, so, and that, that's always a good sign if we're busting at the seams. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Pete. We have talked your ear off and, and had okay. you uh, talk yeah. for a solid hour and 15 minutes. That's so, awesome. Um, <laughs> I love it. Thank you all so much for coming again and, uh, and for being so actively uh, involved. And so you've got your blue sheets for feedback for the committee. 
And if you'd get those to us um, today or maybe by first thing in the morning, then we'll be able to use those as part of our uh, deliberations. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you, everybody, thank for you. coming. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.